Are you interested in making your dick manicure last for three weeks or longer? Then keep watching this video. Hi, my name is Tia and I'm the owner of Nail Dip Studio, an online nail boutique that specializes in dip acrylic products. So if you're interested in any of the products you see in today's video, head over to my website, naildipstudio.com. So starting with step number one. Step number one is very important. This is the first tip that I would say will help prolong your manicure. Dehydrating your nails. A primer is just that. It's just a dehydrator that will help to dehydrate your nails to make sure that you don't have any oils um, on your nails, whether it be natural oils or cuticle oils, and you want to do that with your primer. If you don't have a primer, you can use alcohol or acetone to complete this. Now, jumping into step number two, which is my base. The base coat is important, um, and I have a base coat and I have a top coat, uh, two separate systems. But what I want to show you here is sometimes that inner stem can get stuck. And if that inner stem gets stuck, what you want to do is you want to screw the top back on, applying a little bit of pressure, and then it should pop back into its original um, container. And once that happens, what I want you to do is take some acetone and a lint-free wipe and wipe the inner rim of the um, bottle. And you're doing this for a couple of reasons. Number one, it will remove any leftover um, product that may have crystallized. And so you want to make sure that you don't get those chunks in your application as well as it's going to remove any dust that may be there from like the powder or just, you know, being in the elements of wherever you're keeping and storing your product. So you just want to make sure that you wipe around there really good just so that your dip application goes on smoothly and you don't have any lumps and bumps there. Also, whenever you are doing your nails, either put down a paper towel or you can put down um, an actual towel, but you want something down to help with the um, fallout and the um, powder just sort of flying around and having a paper towel will do that. Now, I like to build up my apex just a little bit, and that's basically just creating the curvature of your nail. I like creating um, additional curvature because my nails can sometimes be either flat and I like to build that up. So I apply almost like a landing strip straight down the middle. I avoid the side walls, but I do sweep the free edge. And I'm doing that because I'm trying to create a grip. I'm trying to almost create a clamp with the powder so that my nails won't lift. This will prolong your manicure. If your nails are not lifting, if your nails are not separating from the ap actual dip application or dip products, then it will prolong the longevity of your manicure and you can wear them a lot longer. So you want to make sure that you're sweeping across that free edge because it's going to create that grip that you're looking for. Okay. After every application, after you finish using that powder, please put your lids on. Um, and the reason I'm pointing this out is because I just spilled, uh, some powder all over the place and I didn't have the lid on. So just as another side little trick. But as we move into the color powder, what you want to make sure that you're doing, especially with reds and or darker colors, is I tend to have different, different brushes for different colors. So if I'm using a red, I will have, I have a brush specifically dedicated um, for my reds. I have a brush specifically dedicated to my neutrals and my lights. And I have a brush that is dedicated to my darker shades and tints. Okay. I'm dusting off the powder from the last um, application just into the little bowl that I have here. And I like to do that because I like to collect the powder there so that it's not all over the place. So that it is not all over the place. Sorry about that. Um, and then after I do that, I then will move into um, setting up the station also for the color application. And again, the color application for me, applying thin layers, you always want to start off with thin layers, okay, and build up. And here's the biggest tip that I can give you. You have to put enough layers on your nails 
for your lifestyle. So if you, for your lifestyle and for the strength of your actual natural nail. So what do I mean by that? I mean this, if you already have strong nails, like your natural nails are pretty strong. You're just adding on some additional layers of dip powder for color. Um, maybe for some added strength, but on, on your own, you can wear your nails and your nails are pretty strong. Then yes, you can go in with three layers, um, of the dip powder and be okay with that. But if your nails are fragile, if your nails are weak, then you need more layers and three layers is not going to be enough. If you know, you do a lot of heavy lifting if you know that you're pretty rough on your nails, like you, you hit your nails on, you know, the wall, the desk, the door, the this, the that, then you need an added strength. And so the way that you add strength is by adding layers. So if you have been doing three layers and you've noticed that your nails are cracking, you have, um, they're not as strong as you would like them to be and add another layer. If it still doesn't work, then add another layer. I wear five layers of dip powder. And this is a debate. I usually have this debate in my comment section with some people. Five layers is just too much powder. It's too much powder. It isn't. It isn't if you're using a true dip powder. If you're using a two in one, a two in one dip powder, like a pro powder two in one, then you can possibly get away with doing three. And the reason for that is because a true dip powder is going to be finely milled. It has to be. How else will the bond adhere to it? It won't. It's not going to saturate it. So you can tell the difference between having a true dip powder versus having a two in one powder because a true dip powder will absorb the base very well. You won't have any spots, any like polka dot spots um, once the powder has dried. But if you notice that the powder has dried and it's still some somewhat splotchy, you see a lot of spottiness there and that's a two in one powder. I'm willing to bet it's a two in one powder. And a two-on-one powder, in some cases, it's not all going to adhere to the base. And when that doesn't happen, there are tricks that you can do to kind of make the, the spots disappear, but they're not going to be completely invisible. They won't be. Whereas though a true dip powder has been ground, grinded and milled um, finer. So because of that, it's going to adhere better. Now, as you can see right here, I just did one layer of color. I went slightly above the midpoint of where I started building my apex. I avoided the side walls. I avoided the cuticle area. I swept the free edge to again, create that clamp to create that grip. I'm not adding width, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to make my nails look wider. I'm trying to make my nails look natural and thin while also adding strength to it. So I know where my strength needs to be. I need my strength in the center part of my nail versus on the sides for me. Whereas let's say if you have extremely narrow nails and you want to build out your width, then you would add your base to the entire nail because you're trying to bulk that nail out on the sides. But if that is not your issue or concern, you're trying to narrow down your nail and keep it as natural as natural looking as possible, then you want to avoid the side walls. You never want to go in and just over oversaturate, over flood the side walls in the cuticle area. Very important tip. Number two, you want to make sure that as you see here, I'm I'm wiping the stem off, but I'm also allowing the product that is actually on the stem from the top coming down to actually come down without dipping my brush back into the container. 
Why is that important? If you put too much base on, number one, you're going to get ripples, you're going to get waves. Number two, it's going to take the product longer to settle, long, longer to cure. And if it takes it longer to cure, that means that it's not fully hardened. If it's not hardened, then you don't have any strength there. Okay. Now, when you go to dip your finger into your powder, you're dipping your finger in at an angle. Never go straight down. Always go in at an angle. Like, um, I would say side angle, right? You want to go in at an angle. And when you go in at an angle, keep your finger as straight as possible so that you're not creating ripples. So you're not creating waves. You don't want to do that. And I know I have a couple of videos on my channel that can address how to get rid of waves, waves and ripples if that happens to you. But to avoid that, you want to keep your finger as straight as possible. Notice what I just did there. I took the product out of the base coat. I noticed I had too much on the stem. I wiped the stem off and then I went back and I'm taking my time to really concentrate and put that product around the free edge and my side walls and my corners. Again, longevity. How do you, how do you make your dip manicure last longer? It starts for me 100% at the base and it starts at the tip where your cuticle is. Okay. Notice I created a ripple specifically so I can show you how to make your, um, how to make it disappear. Use your finger and tap, 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 and put it in place because it's still wet and you can flatten that out. And as you can see right there, you can't even tell that I had a little ripple, a little wave. You want to fix it in real time. If you let it settle, what will happen is you will have to go in and file that down. If you don't, every time you dip your nails, you're making a mountain out of a mohill. Like you're really going to be um, adding on top of that wave, which is going to create an additional lump that you don't need. So again, using the base coat, apply a thin layer. Once you've applied a thin layer or it seems like the brush is drying out on that side, rotate the brush to the other side. There's product over there. Again, tap your product, your powder at an angle. If you can't do an angle, hold the powder at an angle and then dip your finger in. It gives you the same effect. I often hold my, my powder. I do it interchangeably. Sometimes I'll hold the powder. Sometimes I won't. But if you, I find that I have more control when I actually hold the powder with my finger um, than the opposite. So that's what I do. Again, notice I'm using thin layers, thin layers. I'm anything that's extra. I swipe that off. I'm not adding more product, sweeping the free edge, hitting those corners and making sure that I'm doing that. Cause again, we're creating the grip. If you don't create that grip, your manicure is not going to last. It's going to lift in about four days and it's going to start to lift from the, from the free edge. And you can tell, cause you'll start to see your natural nails start to eat. Well, for me, my natural nail will start to curve in, right? It'll separate and start to really break away from the actual dip powder application. And that's not what I want to do. So again, pull your brush out, allow the product to fall down from the stem. Again, notice how I'm going around my side walls, the cuticle area, and I'm just, I'm stopping just shy of my cuticle area, just shy of that. I am sweeping down the side walls and I am again, sweeping that free edge to make sure that I'm creating that grip. I'm holding my powder to create the angle that I need, dipping my finger in, holding that finger straight as possible, right? Without a lot of movement. And then if you notice, I did not dust off the powder immediately. I didn't do that. I gave it time to settle. That's the other thing. You want to give the product time to actually settle and adhere to not only your natural nail, but to bond together and to create that relationship. Again, you see how I've avoided that cuticle area again this is how you sort of dip like a pro if you will 
thin layers and take your time. This for me is now layer number three. And I wanted to call that out because again, I go in with my layers. I do about five layers because true dip powder is not as gritty as like a two in one dip powder. It's a lot lighter. And so because of that and my lifestyle, I know I need five layers. Okay. So as you can see, at this particular point, I have a little bit of room, not quite touching the cuticle area, but I'm about to touch it now. I'm about to get as close as I can get to the cuticle area without the cuticle line, if you will, without going over that. Again, sweeping that free edge, hitting and playing close attention to the side walls, making sure I have a nice amount of product right there on the side, not too much, not too little. And I want to make sure that I'm touching every surface of nail real estate that I have so that there are no breaking points. Because again, those weak points, weak spots, sometimes if you do that, you can, um, your manicure won't last because it will start to lift. It will start to buckle. And that's not what we want to do. Okay. I tap off the access and again, avoiding the side walls. I don't want to flood, but I want to make sure that the product is there because we're trying to make this manicure last. This is the only way I know how to do it. Again, going in using the base coat, I'm going to put the brush down right where I actually stopped at the last application. And again, see how I'm paying very, very close attention to side walls, flipping that brush over. I'm going, taking my time, working my way down the side walls, making sure that I'm getting into those areas where maybe there wasn't any product or powder there that I can see. I'm sweeping across the front, my free edge, as well as making sure that my corners have enough product because I want to create that grip there. I'm using and holding the powder myself, dipping my finger in at an angle, tapping off the extra powder as need be, and I'm moving on. I'm not dusting anything off. I wanna give the product time to settle. They need to get to know each other. This is a relationship. Let them, you know, let them hang out at the bar a little bit. I'm being facetious. But, you know, you wanna wait before you dust off the powder. Again, repeating the same steps, Now that I've completed um, that layer, we're gonna dust everything off. And you wanna make sure that you're dusting your nails really, really well. Um, I dust, I dust, I dust, getting underneath the nails, getting any powder that may, or pigment that may be on your hands, underneath your nails. You really wanna make sure you're focusing on that. As you can see here, the brush, um, the bristles on this particular brush are starting to, um, change excuse me and I use this brush specifically for my red colors um, and that's the only brush that I use so I have different brushes for different colors and so um, as we now move forward I'm going to utilize my base coat and this is going to be the final color layer again part of prolonging your dip manicure is understanding how many layers you need for your nails it is based on preference, it's based on lifestyle, it's based on nail health. So if you have a stronger nail, natural nail, and that nail by itself 
you can wear nail polish and it's fine and you're just adding on depth to give some extra strength, then yes, you can utilize three layers and be good. But if your nail is uh, weak, right? If it's not as strong, then you want to add on more layers. And that's, again, it prolongs your ability to wear your dip nails, your dip manicure. You want to make sure that you're constantly sweeping that free edge and that side in the side walls. Why? Because you're creating that grip. You're creating that seal, that clamp. If the nail has nothing to hold on to, it will separate. Similarly to your cuticle line, cuticle area, you don't want to flood your cuticle because by flooding your cuticle, that product is going over your cuticle line is going over, it's going, you know, onto your finger. Well, what happens there? The product is not gripping to anything. It's gripping to skin and skin is, is slippery and it's not um, intended for that. It's intended to be on the actual nail. So don't over extend your nail real estate by flooding your cuticles and or your side walls because your nails are going to lift and they're going to lift from the cuticle line. They're going to start to lift from the, the side walls. And if you don't sweep that free edge, they're going to lift. They're going to lift from the free edge because there's no grip there. There's nothing. The nail is not holding on and the product isn't holding on to the nail and the nail isn't holding on to the product. They're both sitting here like, I, I, don't, I don't want no parts. I'm good. And you don't want that to happen. Okay. So when I, again, I prefer for me, five layers. That's my lifestyle. I know that I hit my nails on walls. I hit my nails all the time on the desk, the car door, something. And I need that strength. I don't get cracking. I don't get, um, a lot of issues that people have with their dip products because they're under this impression that I can't add more than three layers. That's not true. You can add as many layers as you need. You need to find your sweet spot. Dip nails is similar to coffee, similar to coffee. That's the closest correlation I can think of. Some people like cream and sugar. Some people like just cream. Some people like cream, sugar, and a little bit of syrup. Right. You have to find the sweet spot that works for you when you're doing your nails. Now, I've completed my fourth and final color layer, and I'm now going to go in and dust everything off. And I'm really going to dust really well because we're about to encapsulate all of this. And the reason that you want to encapsulate your nails, number two, is because one, it keeps the pigment consistent. When you're filing your nails, if you file your nails and you don't put a clear base on top, it's very easy to file off the pigment. Okay, very easy. Also, that clear layer will be that fifth layer. And that's just one more layer of powder that I have on my nails, but it's giving me more strength. Doesn't make your nails bulky. It won't make your nails, if you follow the technique, it won't make your nails bulky. Um, as you can see here, this doesn't look bulky, like, and you just saw me, like I did very little editing on this video, um, because I wanted to show you all of the layers. This is what this looks like. And I didn't file anything yet. I haven't shaped anything again. Pre-shaping is key. Doing a good dry manicure is key. Having the right product is key. Knowing how many layers you need for your lifestyle, for your nails is key. If you follow those simple tips, you will be able to prolong your dip manicure for three weeks or longer. But if you don't, then you're going to be doing your nails like every, you know, week. And that's fine too. It might, again, it might be preference, but sometimes if we don't have that time, we may need to do our nails just to prolong it because we got a lot of stuff going on. Well, you have to add those layers. Adding those layers will definitely prolong the longevity of your dip manicure. As you can see right there, I dip my nail into the clear powder twice. And that's because the clear powder is just that it's clear. 
the pigment is not, there's no pigment in that. And so I want to make sure that I have enough clear to really make sure that I'm not going to lose this color payoff that when I start the shaping and fouling process, I'm not moving pigment or fouling pigment off. And number two, I want to make sure that I have some strength. And again, I don't do bulky. I don't do wide. This is very natural looking. And when everything is all said and done, you did your nails for a fraction of a cost and you're finding the sweet spot. And now you know how many layers that you may need. Again, I do five and I have, you know, debated, I'm not going to say argue. I've debated with people in my comments about that's too much. No, it's not. Final answer. <laughs> it's not. As you can see, I have five layers on and it's not thick. It's not bulky. It's not any of those things. Five thin layers. My nails dope as hell. And what I like to do is as that clear starts to settle and I see that the nails are still a tad bit damp because you'll see that I dip my finger right back into the powder because I, again, that's letting me know that it needs a little bit more powder. So I'm not going to move on without dipping twice. And then see, I'm going to take my pointer finger. I'm going to take my ring finger and I dip back in. You want three weeks? That's three weeks. That's how you do it. Okay. Let everything sit. Let everything settle. Take your lid. Put it back on. Move that to the side. Using my brush, I'm going to tighten up my base coat. Put that to the side because we're completely done with that. And now I'm going to dust off the powder and I'm going to move on to step number three, which is the bond, the activator. I'm sorry, the activator and the activator bond is um, basically the step that will harden and crystallize uh, your dip layers and powder. I'm sorry, your dip powder and your liquid is going to be the step that bonds everything together. It creates just a beautiful connection. You got to do this. If you don't have bond, then you need to let your nails sit for about, I would say maybe 10 to 15 minutes, like uninterrupted, don't wet, don't do anything. Just let it sit there for about 10 to 15 minutes and it may harden up enough for you to start to manipulate it. Um, but for me, my system, I have step number three, which is the bond. And I like to apply um, a generous amount because again, I did do five layers. So I want to make sure that, that the liquid um, is sort of getting through and getting down into those layers. I let that sit. And again, I haven't filed anything, but I let that sit. I'm going to take a lint free wipe and now I'm just going to wipe off all of my, my uh, liquids that I have pigment on and just try to clean up my station because as we move forward into the filing process, you just want to make sure stuff is just clean and you're, I'm basically prepping it for the next application. And I don't like to have a lot of powder or, um, you know, dust or residue on my products. Cause again, it's very easy to transfer a lot of that stuff, if you will, over to your final product. And that's not what you're looking for. But as you can see right now, I'm just letting my nails sit. I'm letting the bond do its thing. And I got five layers and it doesn't look, doesn't look, um, bulky at all. So utilizing the um, nail file, I'm going to be using the 180 side to shape and to file. And then I'm going to be using the nail buffer to buff. And again, pre-shaping will assist you in prolonging your manicure. Why? Because you're not going to be taking off a lot of product. Now notice here, I'm tapping. 
I'm tapping my nails because I want to hear this sound. If I don't hear, then I know my nails are not ready for filing. They're not ready. If it sounds more like this and not, I need to let them sit for a little longer. And so that's just one of those things that you sort of, um, again, will help prolong your manicure because you're not filing your nails prematurely. It, the bond hasn't fully done its thing yet. It hasn't made everything really, really, really hard. So you don't want to go in too aggressively without the bond having time to do its thing. So taking my time to shape and pre-shaping is important because if you pre-shape your nails, you're not filing off a lot of the products. Oftentimes your manicure isn't lasting too because you didn't pre-shape your nails. You just went in, dipped, and now you're shaping your nails to the shape that you want, not realizing that. 50% of longevity is making sure that you're not filing off, over filing your nails to get the desired shape that you want. If you had taken the time to get the desired shape by in the pre-shape phase, pre-shaping phase, you wouldn't have to file off your product. So again, just utilize, utilizing my nail, um, nail file and I'm utilizing the 180 side and I'm taking my time. I'm going to start shaping my nails. I don't want to over file. If you have a lot of fallout, a lot of product on your towel, paper towel, that means that you probably over filed your nails. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep as much product in place. I want to keep the integrity of the, the grips that I've created, you know, by sweeping my free edge. I want to keep that intact. And so I'm not going to over file. Using that 180 side, I'm just going to smooth and buff. And as you can see, I'm rotating my finger. I'm rotating my finger, right? What does that do? It allows me to file more evenly because I'm not staying in one position. So I won't have that sort of unevenness, that lopsided nail look. It's going to be even because I'm rotating my finger under the file. I'm going left to right, left to right, not sticking um, in one spot too long because that will create inconsistencies in your shape. See that? See how that's just smooth, smooth. It's not a little bit over here, a little bit over there. It's not any of that. It's like, oh, okay. I see what you're saying. See how you see the curvature there and you see how it's coming from the cuticle line as if it's growing out of my finger. That's the look you want, which is why it's important not to flood the cuticle area. Because when I go to shape around that cuticle line, that's also going to create, wait for it, the seal that you want. Because when I apply my top coat back there, that top coat is going to make sure that there's no water, there's no um, cuticle oil that can aid in lifting that up. I can't do that if I flooded my cuticle area. Won't work. That's why... I, I sort of perfected that the step by step. I don't go, I don't start at that cuticle line from jump. I build towards that so that I give myself enough room to where I can shape and create the look that I'm looking for without um, making it too bulky and too all over the place.
notice rotating. I'm not only am I rotating my nail, but now, especially because I'm fouling closer to the free edge, I'm making sure that I rotate the foul itself. As you can see here, I still have the curve. I haven't fouled any of that off. And I still have the narrow look where I don't have um, flooding on the side walls. You see that I'm just smoothing everything out. And that's why it's important to use the 180 side versus the 100. 100 is um, a lower number, but it has a higher grit. So with that higher grit, that means that it's more abrasive. The more abrasive it is, the more product you can actually take off. So I prefer to use um, minimum 180, but I have files that go up to 220, 240, just because I like to have the flexibility of using different instruments to get the desired look. But I find that I get the best result when I use my 180. And I use the 100 side very sparingly, but sometimes I have to do that. And that's usually if I have too much bulk, I will use the 100 side because I need to remove a lot of product. But if that is not the case, then I'm only really going to use that 180 side. That 180 side is controlled. It won't allow me to take off too much. And that's what I like about it because I, I can control how much I take off versus sometimes when you're using the 100 side and it's so abrasive that you could have taken off too much product in the time, um, in a short period of time. And now you don't have the integrity or the strength that you need because you filed it all off. So you want to make sure that you're using, in my opinion, that 180 side, because again, it gives a very, very natural salon look um, and finish when you use that side. Now I'm going to grab my buffer and I'm going to start buffing my nails. And I want to make sure that I spend some time on buffing my nails. I love buffing my nails. I find that I usually buff my nails somewhere between 30 seconds and um, a minute on each nail. And the reason for that is because I want to move, remove as much texture as I can, as much texture as I can. If you want your nails to look like glass, to look like, you know, they're wet all the time, it's the product and it's also the buffing. Buff your nails 30 seconds. Count <laughs> do something, but you want to buff. Look, I haven't even applied any top coat and look how good that looks, right? Looks really nice. You see the product it's placed appropriately. It's not flooding, no flooding. It's no flitters. It's no flitters. Um, but you don't see any flooding. You see perfectly around the side walls and a cuticle line. And it's just a nice look. And that's when you know your result is going to be good. Like I can tell my result is going to be bomb in this particular phase because I'm looking at it and it's like, dang, that looks good. And I haven't even applied any top coat. So you want to just continue to buff, buff your nails, buff, buff until you can't buff anymore. And if you notice right there, right there in the center of my nail, like right there towards the, like the end. There's a little, is there a little damp spot there? I believe this is the clip where there might be a little damp spot right there. And I noticed that my nails weren't, it wasn't completely um, dry. And so I'm going to add a little bit of bond right there just to make sure that that actually cures a little bit more before I move on. And so that's what I'm going to do. But again, just using my little, um, the back of my brush, I'm showing you, you don't see, and again, I'm natural sunlight. You don't see that flooding. You see that the, the shape, the symmetry is there. It's on, it's on point. It's not the bristles on that brush. They're not being caught. They're not getting caught up. It's just a smooth application. That I know that this particular um, application lasted a month. I had a lot of stuff going on and I wore my nails. This actually is the um, shade Amira, by the way. I wore the shade Amira for about 
four weeks for a complete month. Um, and it was perfect. Perfect. This is a red orange shade. So if you love that sort of red orange shade, this is the shade for you. Now I've buffed everything, filed everything. I used, um, I went to the restroom to wash my nails. I did all of that. And now that my nails are cleaned and washed, um, I'm going to now grab a lint free pad with some alcohol. And uh, I'm just going to use that to further dehydrate my nails and um, everything. And I'm going to actually also use the um, any after spray that I may have on my actual uh, desk. I'm going to use that to remove any debris and product that may be there so that I can get and start applying the top coat to my nails. And as you can see, so pretty. And I just applied alcohol, no top coat. And this again, layers, your filing technique, getting the right buffer, the right grit file to file your nails. That's, these are all key, key signs in longevity uh, of, of creating a dip manicure that is long lasting. And that will give you the longevity that you're looking for. Now that we have completely wiped off and dried off our nails with the alcohol, I usually let my nails sit for about a minute or two before I start applying the top coat. And as you can see there, that's money. Look at that. That is a pretty shine. That is a beautiful, beautiful shine. And I'm doing this um, in the daylight in front of a window because I want to show you what that shade really looks like. The camera, um, when you're just using natural, um, you know, indoor light, it doesn't give it that the pop that you're looking for. So that's why I went next to the window a little bit, just so that you can see it a lot more. A mirror is a beautiful shade. It is a orange red. When you are in the inside indoors, um, it's gonna be more of like a true red. But then when you go outside and that sun hits, you can see the specks of orange uh, shine through. And this is that red shade. This is the shade that you will see. Okay. Somebody walked up to me and said, this was the shade that made them go out and buy the red like this is the red that they were looking for for like the spring summertime like this is that shade this is what that is this is a mirror this you will get compliments on this shade this shade is the shade that will change the game for you this will be the shade that you wear all year round if you could only have one red this is the red this is it now if you don't if you're not like a red orangey person you don't want to see the red and the orange um, marry so well, then you might want to do social light. But if you want something that's a hybrid, that's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, depending on what lighting you're in, you want a mirror. A mirror is dope. It is a beauty and it, and it looks so good on so many women. Like it's a gorgeous shade. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned something today. As always, it was a pleasure spending this time with you and showing you how I do my nails and how I prolong my diff manicures. Um, and until next time, keep dipping. Thank you.